Trust in chariots, home men of war. But I will put my trust in you, O oh Lord. Your all sufficient grace is all I need. Your name and glory. Lord is all I see. Some trust in chariots, whole men of war. But I will put my trust in you, O oh Lord. You're all sufficient grace. chapter 20. So if you'd all find Psalm chapter 20, but before we read Psalm chapter 20, let me set it up for you. This, this is going to be a time of praying through the psalm, and we're calling this praying through the battle, because this beautiful psalm, Psalm 20, is actually about praying for King David as he's about to go into battle. And maybe you know some people that are going through some battles, or you're going through a battle. And that's what this psalm is really all about. But one of the commands of God from Deuteronomy chapter 20 was this. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. So it shall be when you are on the verge of battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. And he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, Today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid and do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. So here's what God said they should do. If you know you're about to go into battle, then call the priests and call the congregation and have the priests announce this to the people. When you see the enemy's horses, when you see the enemy's chariots, don't be afraid of them, for the Lord is with you. Now, Psalm 20, most scholars believe what David did was he wrote this psalm to be a prayer, put the music, and then he gave it to the people to sing and pray for him before he led the troops into battle. So this Psalm chapter 20 is actually something that the Spirit of God uh, anointed David to write and give to this congregation and priests that they would be praying and singing this great psalm for him and the troops as they went into battle. 
Isn't that beautiful to think that we're about to read and, and pray our way through a psalm that David wrote asking people to pray for him as he went into battle. And uh, I know that you might be thinking, well, we don't send our kings into battle anymore. No, but they're spiritual battles. And Lorraine, you have some scriptures on spiritual warfare. Uh, I'd like you just to read those. And in our time today, not only we're going to be going through this psalm, but we want to be praying for people that are maybe in a battle right now, praying our way through the battle. You have some scriptures there? Yes, yeah, Second Timothy 2, 3. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And 1 Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you are also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And Romans 8.31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not con carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That was Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And 1 John 5, 4 and 5. For whatever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Wow, so all those scriptures remind us that yes. life isn't going to be easy. There's a lot of battles to be fought. Yes. And the Christian is compared to a soldier in those first couple passages. Yes. And, and yet, like yes. the priests were to remind the people, don't be afraid when you see the strength of the enemy, because the Lord is with you. And I think you read Romans 8 there. If God is on our side, God is for us. God is with us. So if you're going through a spiritual struggle or you're praying for someone that's going through some spiritual battles, use those scriptures and remember those scriptures. Now, David wrote this Psalm 20 so that the people would be praying this for him. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, the Apostle Paul did the same thing. He didn't actually write a psalm, but he asked people, be praying for me. Pray for me in the Spirit. So we need to be praying for one another. And I hope each one of you has some people that you're close to and you know they're praying for you when you go through a battle. And you're gonna be there for them, praying for them when they're going through a battle. Well, the first few verses of this psalm are a blessing. It could be a pronounced blessing, but Lorraine, would you read verses one through four of Psalm 20, just one through four, and listen to the blessing that David wants the people to be praying for him as he's going into battle. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. Wow, what a great blessing that is. Now just break that down. I'm, I've got it written out here, out here, so let's just break this down. First thing he said, I want you guys to be praying for me that the Lord would answer me in the day of trouble. Now notice he knows he's on the verge of a battle. This is a day of trouble. And didn't the Lord say in Psalm 91 verse 15, I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. So if you're in trouble, what do you do? Call out to the Lord. And, and David is saying, I want all the congregation of Israel to be praying that the Lord will answer me when I call out in the day of trouble. 
Also in verse 1 it says, May the name of God defend you. And that word in the Hebrew, shakab, means to set you on high. In other words, put you up in a place where the enemy can't get you. And not, not just defend you by putting a wall around you. Sometimes the Lord does that. But defend you by setting you up where the enemy can't reach you. May the Lord, your God, defend you. Do you know what the Bible says? That if you fear the Lord, the angel of the Lord encamps round about those that fear him. Do you know the Lord wants to be a shield unto you? The Lord wants to be your great defender and your great protector. The Lord wants to preserve you and keep you alive and deliver you. That's Psalm 41, verse 2. But I love this next phrase in Psalm 20, verse 2. May he send you help from the sanctuary. What do you think that might mean? Yes. May he send you help from the sanctuary. Well, what that means to me is people praying for David. David, when he was on the battlefield, he wanted people in the sanctuary praying for him, and God would answer their prayers by sending David help. And we need people praying for us. For example, in Philippians chapter 1, 19, Paul was in jail, and he said, I know my deliverance will come, my salvation from this situation will come through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit. So if we pray, God will supply the Spirit. What a great blessing. May He answer you in the day of trouble. May the God of Jacob defend you. May He send you help from the sanctuary. Notice, may He strengthen you out of Zion. Now here's a little insight into spiritual warfare. Zion is also a prophetic picture of praise. If you're going through a battle, one way you can draw strength from the Lord is to just start praising Him. May the Lord strengthen you out of your praise. May the Lord strengthen you out of Zion. Look at verse 3. The Lord remembers all the sacrifices you've ever made, all the offerings you've, you've ever given. May He remember all your offerings and accept your burnt offerings. May He grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purposes. See, God says, I want your heart to be revealed in this battle. I want to reveal your heart, and I want to fulfill the desires of your heart. And God says He will fulfill His purpose for us. The Lord will do that which concerns me, Psalm 138 verses 8 and 9. And the Lord will not forsake the work of His hands. Maybe that's a blessing that you want to pronounce over your children every morning. May you answer them in the day of trouble. May the God of Jacob defend them, and on and on. But certainly pray for people that are going through a battle that the Lord would answer and defend and send help and strengthen and, and the Lord would grant their desires and the Lord would fulfill His purpose in their life. Lorraine, why don't you lead us in prayer before we sing again? And as she's getting ready to lead us in prayer, maybe as you're watching, you'll be thinking of someone that's going through a battle. I'm not going to use their name because this video is going out to who knows where, but I'm going to be praying right now for a couple of people that I know that are going through a battle. So let's just pray for people that you know that are in a battle, that these verses will come to pass in their life. Right? Would you lead us in prayer? Thank you, Lord God. Lord, we do thank you, Father God that you do hear their cry and that you want to grant them the desires of their heart, Father, that you will alleviate them from whatever they're going through, Lord God, that we might be here to pray in the sanctuary for them. Lord God, in each one, we lift their names up to you. We thank you, Father. If you at home will just lift those names up of those people you're praying for, they're going through a very difficult time, that either discouragement or depression or health or uh, emotions or job or finances, that, that they will be lifted up by Jesus today, that they will feel his presence, and that we're lifting them up in prayer, that they will sense God working in them. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, on our Wednesday night, we get so many requests sent in. And there's been a lot of requests lately about people that are in depression. Yeah. And that can be a battle, too, an emotional battle. There's people involved with conflicts or people that have had others pray or turn against them. If you know somebody that's battling with depression, would you just pray for them right now? That's a battle. And that help would come to them from the sanctuary, from the people of God praying for them. And that they would start praising the Lord and find strength in praise. So, Lord, just help those that are in the midst of a battle. Jesus. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name. Lift them up. Amen. Let's sing these words again and just focus our heart on worship. And by singing, we're actually going to be doing verses 5 and 6, and I'll explain that in a moment.
verses 5 and 6, and I'm just entitling these two verses, By Faith Celebrate. Celebrate the victory that you're believing for. Start, start praising God and rejoicing God for the victory. If you're going through a battle, believe that the Lord will see you through, that the Lord will answer, that the Lord will fulfill your desire, and He'll fulfill His purpose for your life. And start praising Him now. In verse 5 it says, We will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petition. Now I know that the Lord saves His anointed. He will answer Him from His holy heaven with His saving strength of His right hand. Now what does that mean? Now, David wanted the people to declare that before he went into battle. He wanted the people to be declaring that they will rejoice in God's salvation. And they're going to set up banners. What does that mean? We're going we're to celebrate. We're going to have a celebration. And David's asking them to start doing it even before he goes into the battle. That means by faith. So I'm going to ask you to do that. Right now, will you just start praising God and say, Lord, by faith, I thank you for the victory in this battle. I thank you that you are mightier, that you are greater. I thank you for my loved one going through a battle, that you love them, you care for them, you have a plan for them, you're not going to forsake that plan, you're going to fulfill that plan. So Lord, I'm going to get ready to celebrate. I'm just going to praise you, I'm going to get ready to set up my banner of praise, that the Lord you will bring the victory. Notice what he says in verse 6, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. Well. I want you to boldly declare something right now based on the Word of God, based on what God said about you in 1 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. It says, the one who has anointed us is God. Would you just say right now, I am anointed. I am anointed. I'm anointed and I know the Lord saves His anointed. So thank you, Lord. You put your spirit within me. You put your spirit upon me. And I am anointed and I know the Lord saves His anointed. So we should be people of praise even before the battle is over. And as David is getting ready to go into the battle, he asks the people, you pray these things for me and you get ready to celebrate victory. So I trust you're getting ready to celebrate victory. Just praise him again right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for victory in the battle, for victory for our loved ones. We will rejoice and we will set up our banners in your name. For we know that you save your Thank anointed. You, Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. Great. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's get to the, the verses that we actually from are most familiar with this song that we actually sang earlier. Verses 7 and 8. And I'm calling verses 7 and 8 false and firm trust. Mm -hmm. David locates what is firm trust versus what is false trust. Would you read 7 and 8 for us, Lorraine? Sure. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Amen. Now, many scholars believe that this was written when David was on the verge of a battle with the Assyrians because they were known for their horses and chariots. And notice in Deuteronomy 20, he said, when you see their horses, don't be afraid. When you see all that they have on their side, don't be afraid. And here David says, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. Well, that's false trust. Psalm 33, 16 through 18 is a, a beautiful passage. I'll read that for you. He says, no king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver by any its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy. What is David saying here? He's saying, it's not material things that save you. It's not horses or armies that save you. It's the mercy of the Lord. It's the eye of the Lord upon those who fear him that brings about salvation. So here's a false trust, horses and chariots. And Psalm 60 verse 11 says, give us help from trouble for the help of man is useless. And he says that again in 108, 12. I think of 118.9, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Psalm 146.3, do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. Our trust isn't in people. And I need to say this right now in this point of time of our country. Our, our hope is not in a politician or a party. Our hope must be in the Lord. It's not in a man, it's in the Lord. 
So don't trust in horses. Don't trust in chariots. And here's the firm cross. He says, but we will remember the name of the Lord. And that word in some translations, remember, also translated trust. But we will trust in the name of the Lord. David did that when he was a young man. You have that passage, 1 Samuel? Yes, 1 Samuel 17, 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Amen. So he had a, he had military strength, but David had the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes, and Hezekiah in 2 Chronicles 32, 7 and 8. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him. For they are more, there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, the king of Judah. Amen. I hope today you'll be strengthened by the words of Hezekiah because you might look out all that is against you. And he said, with him is the arm of the flesh, but with us is the Lord our God. David said something else in Psalm 44. Yes, in Psalm 44, uh, 3 through 8. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arms save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them. You are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Through you we will push down our enemies. Through your name we will trample those who rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. But you have saved us from our enemies, and have put to shame those who hated us. In God we boast all day long, and praise your name forever. Wow. I hope you remember that today. Don't be discouraged when man says they can't help you, or man doesn't come through. That's not where our trust is. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. And look at verse 9, what happens to them? They are bowed down and fallen. In other words, they don't succeed, they fall. If your trust is in the wrong area, in the wrong object, horses and chariots, you're going to fall. But we trust in the name of the Lord. Look at verse uh, 9 again. We are risen and we stand upright. In other words, God gave us the victory. Now, one last thing before we close in song and prayer. There's, there's kind of a play on a phrase here. In verse 1, he says, answer me in the day of trouble. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. But the very last verse of this psalm, you might not see it in the English, but the very last verse says, save, Lord, may the king answer us when we call. Well, what, what could that mean, may the king answer us? In other words, let the king survive this battle. So that when we call out to him, he's alive to answer us. But here's the play on words. Literally, the Hebrew says, may the king answer us in the day of our calling. Notice it begins with day of trouble and it ends with day of calling. Could it be that your day of trouble is actually God calling you closer, deeper? The day of your trouble is also the day of your calling. God's going to use this trouble to call you closer to himself, to do more in your life to fulfill his purpose. We just have to pray our way through the battle. And this psalm will help you do it. Well, before Lorraine closes us in, in prayer, uh, Nicole, I'm going to ask, would you just lead us in that beautiful course again? This is right out of the scripture. So use this scripture to pronounce over your family and to pray for those that you know are in a battle. We're going to pray our way through the battle.
um, Psalm 20, 1 through 4. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. And we thank you, Father, that you are able to do above all we ask or think in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So get your banners ready to rejoice and celebrate the victory of the battle. Amen. Amen.